Have you ever wondered what would America be like if it had not been through wars? Thousands and millions of people, both in the past and now, have sincerely wished to have witnessed this utopian society. Unfortunately, wars have been part of our history since the day the country was found. However, these have not destroyed the hopes and the beliefs for peace. Jane Adams was one of the people who have worked tirelessly in the process of peace building through her efforts to combat poverty, ignorance, and injustice. Jane Adams was born on September 6, 1860, in Cadaville, Illinois. She graduated from Rockford College in 1881. And was known for the establishment of the Hull House and her works on securing world peace. She helped to open up the new career for social work to women, and was a prominent feminist, a founder of Progressive Reform, a peace advocate when that was unpopular, and an eventual recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize. She grew up at a time when religion was paramount in people's lives, when God was as real as characters in Dickens, when heaven was a place that you went to to be reunited with your loved ones at the end of your own life.、Um, it was also a time when women had no status in society except as morally superior beings who were keepers of the world's morality,、um, and I think that this is. Very important in Jane Addams's commitment to the poor and her social conscience that she had at a very young age. The main motivation for Addams to get involved in peace building worldwide was when World War One affected Hull House. Her experience at Hull House changed her perspective and set the base of her work later on. In London, she was inspired by Tomby Hall, a spearheading English settlement house that was intended to help the poor. In Tomby Hall, citizens wanted to add, actually moved in with the poor instead of merely offering a basket. In a letter Jane wrote to her sister Alice, she described Tomby Hall as so free from professional doing good, so unaffectedly sincere, and so productive of good. Results in its class and library, so that it seemed perfectly ideal. She firmly trusted that social settlement would benefit the United States for the reason that it permits the young and the educated individual to utilize their energies by assisting the workers to settle down. Also, it provides a place for less fortunate people, such as the new immigrants. She stated that establishing the settlement house. Is securing the future, which exemplify her belief that abandoning poverty is a crucial step towards peace building. According to Adams, the highest moralists have taught that without the advance and improvement of the whole, no man can hope for any lasting improvement in his own moral or material individual condition. Where the establishment will move the entire country as a whole. Besides the contribution on foregoing poverty. Adams was also a strong advocate for education. When Jane Adams graduated from high school, many Americans still thought education for women was unnecessary and even dangerous. A teacher at Harvard Medical School published a book proving that advanced education harmed ladies' perceptive frameworks. The writer of a Scribner Monthly magazine expressed that women college breed disease of body, disease of imagination. Vices of the body and imagination, everything we will save our children from. This absurd and ignorant idea about women's education startled Adam. She then started refuting the idiocy by pursuing her higher education in medical school, with the belief that education harms women, the society, and the country are not able to improve, and it will serve as a hinder to the process of peace building. Adams soon became an educated advocate. She worked to persuade the city to build a school in her neighborhood. Adams believed that in a genuinely democratic-based society, the poor are able to access the activity and information that enhance the higher class, such as literature classes, political discussion, and plays. By having the same educational opportunity, the poor are then able to grow and become beneficial to the society. And if the amount of intellectual people increase in the country, new ideas will be more acceptable, and peace building will thus become viable. 
Adams not only wanted the peace that arises from meeting the needs of the community, establishing school playgrounds, but also the peace within nation that abolished child labor. The reason that child labor has brought to the surface now, as Adams stated in her book *The New Ideals of Peace*, for the first time in industrial history, the labor of the little child has, in many industries, become as valuable as that of a man or woman. Children in general work agiler in the factory and require less space to operate work. More importantly, children were more pliable. They do almost the same amount of work as a wage worker, but does not demand pay. The factory owner used them until they learned to require pay. Then they were being sent back to the community to live among the poor. Adams believed that children should be in school and be educated. Taking them out of school will only make peace building harder, because with the unfair treatments will build up their needs to revolt, and thus the country as a whole will be more prone to danger when it's not unified. Vice versa, if the citizens are all fairly treated and demanded by the country, the possibility of war will diminish. Till she discussed pacifism with Leo Tolstoy in 1896, she had given little thought to worldwide issues. Her concerns had always been specific: the well-being of her neighbors, the security of their employments and homes, the issues of foreigners and blacks, and the fair laborers. Adams' enthusiasm for the war was piqued by its impact on the region in which she lived and worked, Chicago's 19th Ward. When World War I was originated, Adams was startled by the up-and-coming demands in Europe regularly. Numerous Americans seeing these European clashes as an immediate danger to America, favored a quick military develop. Other, Adams included, felt that the United States ought to be the peacekeeper, working through discretion and convey a speedy end to the war. In her speech in 1899, she said, "Let us not glorify the brutality." The same trimness in deliver, the same heroic self-sacrifice, the same fine courage and readiness to meet death may be displayed without the accompaniment of killing our fellow men. She urged America to stay in peace rather than to get involved in the war in Europe, not only because it sacrificed thousands of men, but it used up the valuable resources that could make our country grow. Realizing that she needs Westbrook support. Adams formed a women's coalition, which called for neutral nations to work together to halt the war. They drafted a program, which now known as the Women's Peace Party, stated, "We, women of the United States, assembled in behalf of world peace, grateful for the security of our own country, but sorrowing for the misery of all involved in the present struggle among warring nations." Overall. Adams demonstrated her efforts in peace building by establishing the Hull House, advocating for education, and urging for peace between nations. Her strong determination and perseverance promoted success in her work. All of her works and belief exemplified her benevolence characteristic that implanted a new value and morale to the country. Not only was she a woman with foresight and innovative ideas. But also a woman with extraordinary strength and kindness.